Okay, now I want us to at least let's talk, let's look at the safety aspect of it as well. Some things you need to know as we call it 10 principles of forklift operational safety. Yes, because the fish can use to use it to like very, very important points that you need to know. All these materials are created costly me so that students can quickly understand what this is all about. Do you understand? Yes. I will, before I go, I will send a, a, a manual, a safety manual, and also the full PDF of the as a whole. Okay. So that you can, because it's much involved, that's why I don't want to really engage it. But then, all I'm telling you is what, is, what you need to know as public operators. That way, there's no need to speak any big grammar here. Yeah. So now, understand that we have uh, 10 principles of public operational safety. Now, number one, what does number one say? Public certification is a word. So it means that if you are here, I repeat, if you are here, and you are using a forklift, you are driving a forklift, and you are not satisfied, the federal government or the government of this country, or health and safety, is supposed to arrest you. <laughs> is that clear? So, one, they say certification is a word, must. And what comes before certification? Training was, it comes before what? Certification. The second one says what? Proper attire is a word. It's a must. I see a lot. I say if I get to the peak of my career, I will just always go with my combo. The person is going to be among my team. We're going to companies that are not going by safety rules using this equipment. We'll be cashing out. Because you are endangering people. And yourself. And yourself. You have to, you need to have a, a proper attire. And what are the proper attire of, of a uh, of a forklift operator? Or of a heavy duty operator? Please can you share this and let's move on. Let me I will talk about that here <coughs> I would like to have a copy of all this uh, Now, let's just go through this so that Can you see this? Yes. Number one, I said what? Certification is a word. It's a must. And before certification comes what? Training. Which is everybody, anybody that is not using the equipment now is actually doing the right thing now. Me, when I join Mercedes Benz, let me tell you this is how it all happened. I joined Mercedes Benz as a contract cleaner for two months. The cleaners are on leave. So I just came in, I was doing all this sites work, I just came in, my sister was there, so the cleaning job came, I had to go in. So when I went in, I worked very hard. When I mean I worked very hard, I always like to work hard because I believe that is where my reward will come from. So I cannot do any other thing than working hard for you to see that I'm relevant. So due to my hard work, Mr. Bromberger, who happens to be the part, uh, uh, the, uh, the after sales manager, and Mr. Paddy, who happens to be the workshop manager, we drink coffee, and we drink coffee. We all drink coffee all the time. We drink coffee, so they made me love coffee. In fact, this is the, the type. We always import it, not this uh, type here. We drink it raw. So that one gives me energy all the time. I'm always active to work. So at least I did so many things that made them to staff me. When they staff me as a fork for people, I went to the warehouse, changed the warehouse. I drove, this my finger went off. Even the day it went off, I still continue the job. What am I saying in essence? When I got into the operating field, that was, in fact, I was forced to use the equipment within, because we are in the warehouse. One of the criteria, when I started reading online, one of the criteria as a warehouse worker, I said, I said that before we started the class, right? That you must at least know how to operate warehouse equipment as small as 
Jack, the pallet yeah. jack. Not everybody can use that pallet jack. No. I like? You are right. Give me now. I will drive it like trailer for you. Yes. Yes. I will drive it like, I will be here, I will turn it like this and compact it to it for you. I don't need to lift anything for you. There are different types of that pallet jack too. The ones that will just only lift to a certain height. Why some that will lift to another shape? Am I right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I was forced to know how to drive the, the sometimes Mr. Brother said, Timothy, get on the machine. You must know this thing by force because of my, you know, I'm good. I always make coffee for them while I was drinking. I was making coffee for everybody. I was going for errand, I was doing everything. So, at the end of the day, within one week, you know, it's work, I'm, all, I'm wearing Uber all the time, so I must know how to use it. When I, after some months, I said, no, I can't just be, I can't just have this knowledge here, and definitely the company will not give me a certificate. I had to look outside. I had to start googling. If I now spoke to one of these companies, they said they, they pay the train. I went to that place, I paid, I took my leave. I paid. I went for the training first. I only went for four days. When they saw my videos driving that for me, they said, yeah, I said, I want to come so that I can be exposed and have certificates. On, for, on getting there, they said, should we are coming, you can drive. I said, yes. They gave me a forklift that does not have brake and a different forklift entirely. So when they, on, if you are familiar with Lagos, Osh, Lagos, Osho, the Express, they gave me the forklift to drive on the Express. I said, yeah. But I discovered one confidence that when I got to there, because then when you're working in the company, you're working inside the warehouse, I have big space, working inside the warehouse. Ah. He gave me the phone call. I saw one, I saw one of the guys, he drove it to the express, the way people were just giving him space. I said, ah, see there, we'll see. Okay. He gave me the phone When I was moving, I managed to this thing was not stopping. I just used, pull down my, my fork. I sit down. The fork stopped the uh, fork lift. That was what. So these are skills I developed. If I said if I didn't go to that location to that train, I wouldn't know these things. They asked me to do reverse on the express. When I was doing all these last mile officials, they were just giving me space. I said, ah, yeah, is it like this? Oh yeah, come forward now. I was going. Everybody, even boss, everybody is giving. Me. I said, okay, I, it's giving me the boldness, yes. the confidence that yes, I can do it. There, I got my certificate. So I said, okay, I needed another. Strong, I need to go another. I was just crazy. Inside that becoming a cleaner, I did start, I didn't go to school. I don't have BSc. I tried, they frustrated me. So I just said, let me just concentrate on being professional in what you ah. I went for procurement and logistics in supply chain management. Do you know what that cost is? Yeah. Like you are working in the warehouse. Sometimes when you are working somewhere, even if you're a cleaner, at that point I was thinking, if I remain as a cleaner now, I have to do. A, a hospitality management course so that you give value for the skill you have. Doesn't mean because you have packing trash, doesn't mean uh, you are not useless. You can make it from there. You can have you can be heading a, a company that is that is running scrap and you read their head. Because you have learned and you have professionalized yourself, you are doing better than everybody. So I did all these things. I submitted my certificate. Appraiser came, the company appraised me, they increased my salary. This is after these are things that I did and they happened. Later, I had to contact, I saw a crew of the way. Anytime I go to Turkey, I go to Ajax, I always see their sign, but I checked them online, they were just looking. Let me approach the crew of those. So that was 2020, during that lockdown, in 2019. I met, I hustled the money, I paid. I only go for the, I only went for the training, also weekend. Well, the moment I get to, I, I go to Ogo every weekend, as in the distance is also far for me. But I don't know, I just felt I need to do something to make a change. To stop being one place, to stop, to just uh, stop allow, uh, allowing people to use me. So I continue and continue until I got satisfied from April. I was going for evening class with the guy in the office. He would put me and talk to me. He didn't do all these things for me. I repeat. My company didn't give all this thing. They did, I didn't want all this thing, but what am I saying? They say that I put in the effort I needed and I got certificate from them. So to understand, the knowledge I have is the power, the knowledge you have is the power you have. Now, here I am today. Mercedes Benz, due to one thing or the other, I was laid off. What am I supposed to do? I have to leverage on what? The things I gathered through the process of being a boss. A 
contract cleaner. Within the space of the normal ways I spent today, I can count the things I have done. Even if I was not earning so much salary, but within that period, I wasn't using my money anyhow, I was using it to get valuable things that would push me to the next phase. To God be the glory, I am in Kaduna because of forklift. The day I got the opportunity. When I got the opportunity with my friends to be at Unilever, they played with me. But then, what did I do? When I got the day I got the opportunity, I said, God, thank you. Whatever sacrifice you take, I must give it. That is why I'm here today. Now, Epilogue 2 did not know that I was, it was just that international organization that did not come. I leveraged on it. I started going back, going back and going back just to improve people. At the end of the day, I just got a call that, please, oh, we don't know if you can be part of our money. And I said, it's fine. So long as it's what I enjoy doing, I will go on. I don't know if I, I'm communicating. So just have it in mind that this point does not restrict you to just one, uh, this focus alone. You are going to, in fact, the way the life is going, you will definitely be exposed to a lot of things that you cannot even imagine. Are we together? Can we proceed? Can we fire one? Yes. I'm talking about 10 principles of what? Forklift operational safety. Yes. Where we talk about number one rule is that what? Certification yes. is the word. Yes. So, me, I got my certificate, right? From two organizations, in fact, three organizations. Global Tech is one of them. That's where I got my instructor uh, certificate from. While I was the demand, I had to say, Congrats, they have actually done well. Till today, the company is still existing. Anytime they call, in fact, I've been, I've been in talk with the Owner, I deal with the owners of the company, somebody that was the cleaner. Are we together? The second is that proper attire is a word, it's a must. That's why I brought our attention to what this. So now, what is PPE? Personal Security Agreement. So which I expect that your company or your organization should have their own PPE, your own uniform for you. Now, this particular PPE is not only restricted to forklift for people. <coughs> as long as you are, you are into, you are in the factory, you are in here, your PPE will define you. The kind of job you do will determine the kind of PPE you use. That's why I have to bring in all this for you to know. That number one, we have the eye uh, contact, eye class, or uh, eye for eye protection. That if you are working in a dusty environment, you need what? Eye, eye, uh, eye glasses, eye goggles, yeah, to protect those either chemical or dust from getting into your eye. Then, uh, number two, we have the uh, helmet. Helmet is for what? Head protection. Should the case whereby something might fall on your head or you are trying to get on the forklift, you hit your head up, you have to, that helmet to do what? Protect your head, right? We have the, uh, that, the next one is um, the nose mask for, to protect your respiratory, uh, for respiratory protection. During the lockdown, by force, everybody was on board nose masks, just like go here. We need to have that as well. When you, have, you find yourself in such harsh environment, you need to make it of what? Nose masks. We also have what we call the reflective jacket or your overall. That protects your body from, maybe you are working in ghost blacksmith, anywhere, you are working in anywhere that, that one is very, very important. The reason why it has reflective, at night, somebody can always put, it's a uniform that is construction location, you always see them, it's a uniform that everybody must wear. Wear. We have the ear plug, that is for what? Ear protection. Should the case whereby you are working in a noisy environment, you will not be dealing with signs and signals. People will tell you, hey, come down, hey, they will be giving those signs. That is for what? For ear protection. We also have what we call we have uh, the hand gloves, yeah? That's for what? Hand protection. It's necessary. When you are checking your oils and all those things, it's not really necessary to allow these things to. Some, of the, some chemicals are not good for you. Do you understand? To always keep your body neat, you all need all this. Then we have the safety boots of different types. You need to, as an operator, you need to do what? Have this as a proper attire. Is this clear to you? Yes. Number one is what? Certification is a word. Yes. Before certification is what? Training. Training. 
Number two says what? Proper attire is a what? Is a must. Then the next one is what? You need to have comprehensive knowledge about the four creeds. That is where you now go to where I now explain to you when you see the machine. The moment I cite exhaust pipe is a what? An internal combustion engine. I'm not close here, but I'm here to know the, the text whether it is going to be using fuel or diesel. Now, if it's gas, you will always see the gas cylinder on it. Are you getting me? It's very simple. Then, at least you get to know uh, that is when your attention will be drawn to, okay, you are close to it. Let me look at the data plate. Let me see the uh, uh, storage capacity of the machine and all that, right? That is where you need to have proper knowledge about the machine. You check how many levers, how many pedals, you need to have proper knowledge about it before engaging it. Is it two liver? Is it three liver? Is it four liver? Do you understand me? You see that all these things have taught you and it are connected together. Right? Can we move on? Yes. The next one is what? Once you maintain, uh, sorry, daily inspection of the equipment. They do not state only for me. Daily inspection of the work equipment. Now, here's another document here showing you uh, daily and share this as well. So this will be using this uh, behind. We'll see, uh, well, they'll see prints for us tomorrow. So we use it to conduct, we'll use it to conduct another check again tomorrow. So daily inspection is a word. You have to carry out your work daily inspection. So as part of the principle you must conduct, you must follow is that you must carry out daily inspection. Daily inspection will come with a word before you check it. Like I said, I will ensure that your company has a daily inspection for all the equipment they have. Do you know why? Can somebody tell me why you need daily inspection? Uh, to, uh, why you need to do carry out daily inspection on your on your equipment? Not only for things. Can somebody tell me before you get on your equipment? Can you guess? To ensure that the equipment is safe for you to use. Please, what did he say? To ensure that what the equipment was safe. safe for you to use. Now. That daily inspection is beyond. Do you understand me? Now let me quickly bring your attention to this. What are the things you are supposed to what are the things you are supposed what are the basic daily inspection you are supposed to do? Let me show you here. <coughs> okay, it's here. You share this place go through before we come back here. <coughs> number one. What does number one say? You check all fuels. Yes? You check all what? All fuels. Hydraulic oil, uh, transmission oil, engine oil, uh, what do you call it? Your water. It's also food, brake oil, and all that. You need to check all what? Fuels. Number two, what does it say? Check tires. Number three says what? Check lights. Number four says check mass and hydraulic cylinders. Have I not talked about all these things? Have I? Yeah. He said you should do what? You should respect what? Oh, folks, oh. if they are properly put together. Sometimes you must have used, 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 used. You don't know that there's a crack. Now, upon your lifting, found something, don't, don't ever, don't just miss this daily inspection. Always do it. That's why I said, if you are to resume as a the habit of an operator, your duties, your love, your, 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 um, let, let, let us say, you are to resume from the hours of what? Seven. So, uh, eight, eight to two, o'clock. Eight a.m. to uh, eight to five, right? You are supposed to resume by what? Seven, seven or seven thirty. So that before the time for you to start, you, it's not that time that company is expecting to start your operation. You will not come and start. You understand me? So if you start seven o'clock, anything that needs to be fixed that moment that can be done that moment, it will be done. Let's say between eight eight something, it will be fixed and get on your operation safely. Do you understand? Now, another one says you do what? Check load. What do I say? Check the load. When you have lifted the load, please always do what? Check it. To be sure that it is safe for you to move. Is that clear? The other one says what? Capacity plates. Always check the capacity to make sure that they are always there. Due to one or two things, they might pull up. But always check it and be sure that you are using, you are carrying, you are lifting the right load at the right, with the right machine. Are we together? Check condition and adjustment of the seats. 
you are seated on the seat. Baby is too far from the steering. Adjust it. Make sure you are you are seated comfortable. Not managing. But Nigerians we like to manage, we like to manipulate any idea. Let's just know. Do you understand? The other one says you check brakes. So when you have checked your machine, you start, check, go forward and backward, engage the brake. If it's not working the way it's supposed to be, you will indicate it on the checklist. All these components are there on the checklist. There is also other checks. You write it. Be sure, be, be confident enough to be able to pick up something all the time. So I as a supervisor, I will always, anything that happens, I will always rely on the word, on the checklist. Yeah? Also, check the controls, levers, going forward, neutral, and backward. Check the parking brake, Z, you know, is it working normal? Check all these things to be ensure that everything is okay before you carry out your operation. So therefore, daily inspection is what? Is a must. Are we together? Can we move on? The next one says what? <coughs> You should maintain what 360. Yes. That when you sit on the machine, you look left, you look right. That is, you are looking out for the hazards and the risk around. If you move like this, you know the forklift is moving, it's moving with the rear wheel. It's turning with the rear wheels, right? Yeah. So when it's moving this way, that's assuming this is going to be there. If I am to turn like this, the forklift has the capacity to turn around on the axis, you know that. Yeah. So if it's moving like this, is it going to affect this thing? If it's, it's going to affect you, what are you going to do? You make the necessary adjustment. Do you understand me? You move away or you come out or you call who they need to help you move it away. Do you understand me? That is the one. Another thing is, once you, um, number six says, you should, <coughs> you should, a, a floor marking system. You know, that's just like saying, <coughs> For example, where there are some companies you have several cars, you have all this. Where you are supposed to park, where you're not supposed to park, where your machine is supposed to be. You have to understand those floor marking systems. Do you understand me? That one is not a big deal. Where you see that okay, pedestrians are passing, you should always slow down, right? Because they have the right to that road. You know your right. So whenever you are approaching all those floor markings, you need to do what? Pay attention to them. Do you understand? Let's move on to number seven says four click capacity. Like I've talked about it, you should know the turning of the machine. That is when you know the turning of the machine, you know the, the capacity of it is supposed to be. Then we have number eight. Four clips should not carry extra people. Yes, you guys have done it. You have done it. I repeat, you have done it. Yes, by sitting on at the back of the <laughs> You reported yourself now. That's great. So you should never, my boss always said, Timothy, because of my friend, anytime you carry somebody on this forklift again, I'm going to, I'm going to fire you. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You should never. I was training a student. <coughs> I was doing an online class for the student because he stays far, and the company wants me to conduct the class for him. So <coughs> while we we're talking and talking, so when we got to this point, he said, ah, it's true. Now you understand why he needs to come for the show. He said he wanted to talk to that guy to train him. But his man said no, he should just go and pick outside. So that unfortunately, when the, the guy operating that forklift in that company, the, the one guy actually lobby that you should train him. And if you are not certified to train somebody, you are not supposed to. They started their uh, guru when the guy okay, is not around. They will go and they will go and all of a sudden. <clears throat> Something happened. The person that came to train died. The forklift tumbled. Probably lifting beyond the load capacity of the forklift. The guy was seated by the side. And you know, it is only when another seat is created, that one, the, it is going to come under a certain law that an, operate, an extra person is only is allowed. You will see that the, the white people they will create another seat reservation for that person. But believe me, Nigeria, you see some people hang like this. They will be watching. Yes, because this thing can go into battle. If anything can happen, you can find me or anything can happen. And if you are not properly or holding this uh, iron, uh, iron frame firm, you will, it will, you will fall off. And like I said, the accident that come 
the after effect that comes is not something, it's not child's play. Even if your hand breaks, yeah, it's not the beans. You will feel the pain for the fact you'll be condemned for the rest of your life. So safety first. Safety first. Are we together? Don't try it. If you want to talk to me, if somebody wants to talk to you, please pack. Tell me after we finish communicating. I can go ahead and carry out my application. Please, that number eight is very, very important. Do not carry extra persons on the board on the equipment. Number nine says stability of the four grids. <coughs> that one, most of the time, I make reference to when you're doing your, uh, let's say, your tires are what makes your machine stable all the time. So if one is chopping off, the other one is, you need to think of how you are going to, or let's say one tire is down, you want to manage it, no, ensure that it's up properly, set up properly for you to carry out your operation. Is that clear? Number 10 says, speed should be within limits. Okay? Yes, sir. It should be within what? Limits. I don't think forklift is made to run for, to start running flying on the express. You can't, you can't, no matter how you run, you can't run more than bicycle to save. Yes. I mean, you forklift, can forklift compete with or, or Kada? It's not possible. Do you understand? So speed should be what? Within limit. Please, is that aspect clear to us? That third principle of forklift computer, is it clear to us? Yes, yes. 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 question. I just want to support it with what you said. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Observation. Yes, sir. Go ahead. In this place where some people are driving in, shooting in, phone, okay. secondary yes. area, or I think that one of the Yes. You need to be, let's say, um, you need to put out anything that's going to distract you. Unless you are working alone, even me, if I'm working alone, I need to because some things might happen, some information, somebody might be trying to pa pass information. That music, that music will take all your attention away. So please, the only thing that will be on your ear is your what? Your ear blow. Exactly. That, that one is going to filter all the noise and keep anybody that is talking will be able to hear clearly, right? Are we good? Yeah. Now, uh, let's quickly share this. <coughs> So this will be experimenting it on the machine. We are getting closer, right? Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more for a 